Hi, I'm Valerie Espinosa and I'm your Public Regulation Commissioner. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of our program and thank you for watching. With us today, we have somebody very special who came here from Espanola. She is uh, with the Concerns of Police Survivors. That's the name of her organization and her name is Cheryl Schutz. And I think given um, a lot of the tragedies that have been occurring, especially most recently over the last several months, um, I thought it would be appropriate um, to bring her here to talk about, um, you know, not only the survivors, but, you know, the families and the wives and the kids and, and what happens to them afterwards, um, after something, you know, this criminal happens and, you know, these repeat offenders continue to, to um, hurt and harm our society and our families and our people and, and hurt those that are there to protect us. And so we need to step up to the plate and, and, and give them a hand. I know uh, many uh, officers from state, city, and um, the, the county sheriffs who, you know, put themselves out there. And so I thought we would give them this, this venue in which to, uh, to talk about them and some of the things that, that, you know, they go through and the families go through. And so um, I, I met um, Cynthia. Yeah. Miera, that's who, at, at the Mayor's Fun Day. Um, I represent all of northern New Mexico, all of um, the west side of Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. My, my district is huge for the PRC. So I, I, attended, I always attend the Mayor's Fun Day, and, and there I was talking to the two girls also who lost their father. Yeah. I think they were sisters. Yes, they're sisters. And so, you know, it, it's hard to have a conversation without getting a lump in your throat or a tear in your eye. You know, there they are trying to raise money. And so I got to talking to them. They were, they'd were they make some cookies or somebody did. And, you know, everybody's grabbing goodies. But I got, it, I got into a conversation with them. And so that's why I wanted to reach out to you. But um, I'm, and, and instead of me doing all the talking, I'm going to let you do some talking and introduce yourself, say who you are, what you do and what it's like. You yourself said you've lost your husband 13 years ago. So I'm, a, I'm gonna let you uh, take over and, and talk about how the, communi the community can help you and participate and support not only the families, but the officers. Thank you, I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, Concerns of Police Survivors is an organization that's nationally, and it is an organization that steps in and helps the families and co-workers of surviving officers that die in the line of duty. And when we talk about line of duty deaths, it's based on the criteria that the Department of Justice sets up for line of duty deaths and how those they qualify. And so that's the group of people that COPS uh, supports. In New Mexico, we have a chapter um, that deals with just the state of New Mexico and that chapter deals um, helps with all line of duty deaths and when we talk about helping with line of duty deaths we're talking about supporting the family again and the co-workers through um, peer support counseling uh, retreats helping them go to National Police Week I, things like that education what is National Police Week National Police Week happens every year um, it's from May 12th to the 16th and what Police Week is about is where that current year survivor list uh, I mean current year officers that have died in the line of duty they're honored in Washington DC and it starts off on um, with a candlelight visual on the 13th it then has um, two different days of seminars that are um, it's a, they're awesome. Cops puts on the seminars and what they do is they provide us tools to in the rebuilding process um, of our lives after the devastation of a line of duty death. Well, we obviously know about Daniel Webster and um, I, I noticed that they're um, I heard on the news they're having a, a fundraiser for him. Um, at Hooters in Albuquerque on Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, I, I can s appreciate how people get together and we had an officer lost here in Santa Fe too and how, how not only the community gets together, but like you say, the employees and law enforcement, you know, get behind the families to, to help them through not only um, burial fees and, and everything else, but the support system that goes behind it. Yeah, you'd be amazed at what happened. 
You'd be amazed at what occurs when a line of duty death happens. First of all, it's not just the family that's affected. Our coworkers, they have to get back out there on the streets and not act like nothing happened, but they have to perform as if nothing has happened when they've lost their coworker and in such a devastating manner. In addition to that, the family, uh, when we have these fundraisers, there's several fundraisers going on for the Webster family. And a lot of people may assume that there's a lot of money um, collected for the family and that um, in some aspects people look at it as a windfall. And the reality is, is when all that money is collected and all the death benefits, ha benefits are um, accrued, when you divide that up in the lifespan that that officer would have had had he died of normal circumstances, that money still leaves that family at a below poverty level. And so when you divide it up over the years of what they would have had left, it's not a lot of money. And so we really encourage the community to, to join in on all these um, fundraisers to help the family because there's a lot of rebuilding process. Specifically with um, the, Daniel Webster's wife, you know, she is going to be taking off some time from work just to, to deal with the grief of this. In addition to that, a lot of survivors are um, have to re-educate and have um, to add to their educational pool and tools. Well, you know, and, and even watching watching the um, the burial on TV or you know the the news clips, how the dispatch had to say her last farewell. Yeah. That's and, a hard and one. yeah, you know, and, and he doesn't answer. Yeah. So how does that impact? I mean, you know, it tears us up all. It tears all of us up. You know, the last dispatch. It's in your mind. You know, they're not going to answer, but you want them to. And it's, but it's a very honorable way to 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 say goodbye to them. And another part of a uh, line of duty death is it's a very public grieving. And not only is the family lost, but the coworkers, but the community is lost. And we're all grieving at totally different levels, at different areas. You know, you have the, the extended family that have to tr sometimes travel in. You have the spouse that has to deal with the public. And it's not a bad thing, but sometimes it makes your grief complicated. And it's almost like the death of, of, of President Kennedy, you know, you. It, it really is because mm -hmm. this person is, is you know, it, it just hurts the same way. It's a public remember, servant. He yeah, was a public when servant. When you're young and you're little and you remember seeing all that. And even now you get a tear in your eye because you don't even know the guy. But you just feel so bad for the survivors and for him and for what happened to him. Yeah. him. And I don't know what, you know, what's wrong with, I don't know if it's a justice system, how these people... Um, get out again. It just doesn't make sense to me when you see these, you know, repeat offenders and you hear it over and over and over, repeat offenders. So I can't imagine, um, you know, I, I how, how funny to say this. I, when I was young, I used to either want to be a teacher or a police officer because you always want to go after the bad guy or, you know, yeah. help the kids. Yeah. So I just can't imagine when an officer is approaching a car, whether it's you or me or whoever it is, you know, what they're thinking, who, who, who this person is, um, you know, and that's how anything could happen. You just get shot. You would think that their protective gear would help, but I guess it doesn't always help if you get hurt in another area they can shoot you in the head. I don't know, you know, yeah. how that exactly happens, but um, it, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, I think when we talk about the repeat, repeat offender issues and things like that, I think it's a whole system. I don't think it's just the judges, just the DA, just the officers, just any of this. I think it's a, the, the whole system needs to be addressed. Um, the fact that these repeat offenders, especially ones that are so violent like this, that are let out on the streets to, they're going to do it again. And they do do it again. Do and they do it again because they need a shelter and they need to go back to jail? Or they do it again because huh. there's a mental illness? I would not want to get into the mind of How those criminals. But what I, do, I, I, what I do think is that I think it's about money. I think it's about the cost of dealing with these offenders. I think it's about um, the system that we have in place that... Um, there's a lot of pressure from overcrowding. I don't know what the answer is, but I do think that there are some problems that need to be addressed. Yeah, well, that, you know, it, it all leads up to going back to, to you know, 
expectations, education, and then the families rebuilding their lives. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to, to, to sort of focus on um, and how the community can help understand or help with um, some of the fundraisers you're having, uh, maybe attend, maybe contribute. How, how does that work? Well, there's a couple ways that you can help as far as a community is one, attend all these fundraisers because there's never going to be enough money to help with the family. I mean, there's so many things that happen when, um, especially for the spouse right after the death occurs, is something that we're, gonna, we're working as an organization to do is to change some of the legislative issues about health insurance. For example, when my husband died, my insurance was cut off two weeks after he died and I had a pre-existing issue that I had to have surgery for so I was forced into having it right then right after the funeral to have surgery because of that which put my son in a situation where he had to worry about me when he had just lost his dad and that that's another trauma um, I know with uh, Jeremy White Martin's spouse she is pre she was pregnant and they cut her insurance off you know all there's se several of the departments don't have anything in place where we can just have insurance, affordable insurance. Now, we're allowed the COBRA, but that is so astronomical, we don't have the money. Yeah, because you have to pay both the, the state's portion and, the, and yes. the spouse. And so we want to work toward that. Another issue um, that we have to deal with is remarriage. Um, there's several spouses in, in New Mexico. If you remarry, you lose some of your death benefits, just like that, because you remarried. And if you don't have a child that that would transfer down to, it's gone. And what the state is saying to us as spouses and to families is that officer, once you remarry, that officer's death didn't matter. Those benefits that he planned for you or she planned for you are non-existent anymore and they don't matter. And that's not a, a, a statement that the state of Mexico needs to say to the surviving families. And several states nationwide have, have changed the remarriage clause. They're working on getting insurance for the family, especially the spouse, to carry on. Because a lot of times what happens is that the spouse has to end her employment or his employment so that they can care for the children. And that happens more than you think. So, so does it, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Maybe I can help you with the, with the awesome. lobbying. Um, but I was going to ask you, so it happens regardless if it's in the line of duty or if they, this happens even if, let's say, somebody passes away from other causes, an accident or cancer. It, is, is it the same mechanism? I, I don't know as far as illnesses. I know that with line of duty death, if a, um, if a spouse remarries, they lose some of their death benefits, like workman's compensation is, is um, ended. Um, it's, just, it's just not fair to that family and to the officer's legacy. You know, when my husband died, he went to work every day thinking that if it happened, at least he knew his family would be taken care of. And that's not what happened. We weren't taken care of. And your your husband, if you don't mind talking about Not it, it was 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 killed in the line of duty as well. Yes, uh, uh, Kevin, um, we were on a picnic up in Pilar, and a little boy uh, fell in the river and was drowning, and he went in after and saved him. He got him to the side of the shore, but he drowned. Aww. And um, you know, we spent years in court dealing with the, our death benefits, and still haven't gotten um, a lot of the state benefits that we were entitled to. I'm so, so it's sorry. just a continuation of, and the other thing that that does also is it delays grief as far as you're putting that, your grief to the side because you have to deal with logistics. And you have to focus. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to focus deal with on what you need issues. to take care mm -hmm. of. Exactly. And I know with um, other widows in, in the state, Jeremy Martin's widow, you know, she's having to deal with legal issues when she should be dealing with raising her children. You know, she was pregnant during this last year just gave birth to a healthy baby, but she had to worry about the legalities and logistics of her husband's death benefits because of the um, issues that surrounded it. That's terrible. It is. And, and I know